I don't know what it takes, what it takes to make people clear what's going on in Darfur, but it just seems that it's, as you say in Holland, it's far away from my bed. Yeah. I don't really, you know, it touches me to a certain level, but at the end of the day, it's back to business, back to your TV, back to your game, your game Boy, back to whatever you have, your friends. And, um, and it's not because people in the US or people in Europe don't care, it's just maybe too complex. Um, maybe they don't see a solution. <laughs> we forgot the hug. <laughs> we forgot the big well, hug. Well, people would be very angry with me if I didn't. And that, that, that's how a lot of people. The robberies that were taking place have increased in intensity, intensity of violence, etc., etc. People have been beaten up and, until the attempted theft of our car in, in uh, Baha'i, almost somebody got killed and got shot. You know, he got shot out with 11 bullets, had a Kalashnikov, and he was hit by three, one in his liver, one in his lung, and one in his leg. I strongly advise you to go, though. You usually don't want to advise people to go to the death straight away. <laughs> <laughs> right into it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, we'll send this to your mom's day. Oh, yes. Everything's <laughs> fine, mom. Love you. Just fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Now, coming back to your trip from uh, Abeche to, uh, from uh, Jemena to Abeche. If you get robbed, don't do anything against them. Give your camera, give your everything you have. Cooperate with everything they want. In the most likely case, you won't be killed. There is regular transportation between uh, Abeche and Jemena right now. Mm. Would it be worth it? The, it would be killed. Kill? <laughs> <laughs> we might have that conversation, so don't look too hard. I know. I've been working in Africa before and I've never worked in a refugee camp and, and I've been working in infectious disease programs around the world and I thought this is another uh, part of the kind of work I've not done yet. Uh, I think refugees, uh, it, it says something about this world that we allow people to flee to another country and not, uh, not, find, uh, not find a solution. Um, and I want to do my little work, I just want to do my little work. And it's for me has been an amazing experience because they're, they're strong, powerful people and uh, they uh, teach me things every single day. Moving people is very easy from A to B if people agree but they don't agree. And if you would ask them today, what you're gonna do? They say, uh, we're gonna go either back to Sudan, either we stay here, but we're not going further into Chad. <laughs> there's between four and 600 births per year. So that means that there's about 15, 1,200 to 1,800 children that, that grew up in a refugee camp. For them, that's home. This is my path, this is what I want to do in my life. I tried to live in New Holland for two years and I just utterly failed. <laughs> I, I, I gained 20 kilo, I got frustrated, <laughs> I broke up with my girlfriend, uh, I was earning a lot of money and I was absolutely lost. And I could not, I could not adopt, I could not adapt, I could not adapt myself, I could not apply myself, I could not develop, I, I just wasted my time and withered away. And, uh, you know, being in Africa, it's tough and it's hurtful, but I think it's what makes me happy. Ah, there was a clash only on the 7th of October where uh, several hundred people died three kilometers away from the camp. How, how much trauma does that bring upon them when the, when the Antonov, the planes are flying over and when they hear the shelling of the artillery and they hear an uh, intense uh, battle going on between several thousand on one side and the other side. That's a trauma again that must have torn open their hearts. I used to go in blind rage and sometimes I still do about you know, what's, what I've been seeing in the world. And not that. I can live with a child. This is very, very strange. I can live with a child dying in front of me but from preventable disease because I know that's the way nature works in a very sad way. But I cannot handle the fact that there's indifference about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That to me is beyond my conception. That's what will hit most is the personal experience of somebody. And actually not even my story, but the story of a refugee. So exactly what you're doing. Going out there, 
talking to people and demonstrating that they're not pitiful. No, they're vibrant people. Mm -hmm. They have a message to tell. They're not begging you for attention. They're telling you their story and it's up to your decency to do something about it or not.